Akistad's Video Productions presents from Reno, Nevada, the Sands Regency number 21. I'm Bill Cardona, along with, uh, listen, by the way, it took us seven years to get you into this booth. Say a couple words and see if the viewers out there can can. Uh, well, you have, can, haven't can told who I who was yet. I'm Jim Rempe, and uh, <laughs> Billy's been trying to get me to do this for seven years. And well, he cornered me this time, made me promise to do it. I almost snuck out the door, but he caught me anyway. So here I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, needless to say, that was Jim Rempe. He has a very recognizable voice. Anyways, the tournament started with 70 players. We're down to just two. Earl Strickland came from the undefeated side. Jim, uh, excuse me, no. Jim Rippey, it's Efren Reyes. Efren Reyes was on the undefeated yeah, side. I'm sorry. Earl Strickland come from the uh, one-loss side, and Efren Reyes is on the undefeated side. But uh, that doesn't make any difference because we're going to play one match for the championship. It's going to be a race to 13. Unlike, uh, I believe, last year, was it a di- well, or the year before that, it was uh, two out of three sets, wasn't it? More than a couple of years ago. I think it was about three four years ago they were playing two out of three sets. They changed that because uh, I had to catch a plane. That's right. You yeah. were the, the reason why they changed <laughs> right. that. Which everybody started doing now because we, we get that red-eye flight back. We leave at night and get back home to the east in the, in the morning. So they actually changed it because it was getting too long. And two matches, the crowd get bored. You know, it's, it's just no good to play two matches. Everybody knows going in, so it's, uh, you know, everybody accepted that rule. Okay, in the earlier match between C.J. Wiley and Earl Strickland, David Maddox and I were discussing the importance of getting it together mentally for the Sunday matches because it's a, on Sunday it's a different, different, a totally different flavor than it is on Saturday. Uh, the atmosphere is different. I mean, you, you just have a totally different feeling. Tell us about how you feel going into a Sunday match. Well, I mean, the, the semifinals really was some bad play. I mean, I hate to say that because they're great players, but uh, you have to prepare yourself mentally when you come into the match. You should be in stroke, otherwise you wouldn't have made it this far. And I think that the key to winners is when they start playing in the semifinals and finals, Billy, is, is is that they get out there to have fun more than to get, let the pressure get to them. Because if you let the pressure mount, it's going to get to you. So you have to just go out there. You've already won some money. You're in the finals and just have a little fun. Go for the shot. Well, I'll tell you, uh, that's exactly, I think, the reason was why Wiley didn't take advantage of the opportunities that he had because he seemed like he was a little stressed out and he really couldn't take advantage of the opportunities that was given to him because he wasn't having fun. It was just very serious for him out there and uh, possibly they have, that may have been his downfall. He let the pressure get to him. You know, CJ's been out on a tour now for about five years and has never won. I mean, that's got to be a big mental block in his mind when he got up there figuring this is his chance again. And, uh, and he just left, left it go. I mean, what he, what he did there, scratching in the side pocket on, what was it, the seven ball or something like that, was just incredible. Uh, and he just didn't prepare himself. You just you got to get out there and have fun. Like I said, if you're going to lose, you're going to lose anyway. So don't let the pressure get to you. Well, sometimes it's a lot easier to do than to say, especially from a veteran player and a seasoned player like yourself, who has found himself in the finals so many times. As a matter of fact, some people like yourself thrive on this type of a situation. And it, for you, it's kind of easy to say, but for most, it's really not. Well, it's the truth. The tough, the toughest one to win is your first one. I mean, I remember when Efren Race first started coming around. Uh, he couldn't win a tournament. He would come in second, 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 until he finally broke the ice. In fact, this match here is a, is a rematch of the 1994 World Championships. And Efren Reyes defeated. Yes, he did. Earl, no, Earl, 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 Earl blew him out. Earl blew him out in that match. Please welcome to the Philippine the now you've been watching both players play throughout the week. Uh, if you had to pick a pick a player to, to win this championship, who uh, who would you decide? Or who would you uh, pick? I would pick Ray's in this match. Uh, Earl even uh, said himself he wasn't playing that good, and, but he says that all the time unless he plays perfect pool. Uh, but he just uh, I think uh, everyone's got a better frame of mind right now going into this match. I mean he's doing stuff like like his nickname calls for the magician. He did some stuff in this term that was just incredible. Oh, he certainly did. Nakistats has the tapes that he that he played in. A lot of the tapes uh, that Akistats has are w- worthy of watching, particularly the ones that are raises in. And uh, he played a match against uh, Archer last night that was incredible. That one Massé shot he had or something like that with the eight ball where he had to jack up on it Massé down for the nine ball. That was just an incredible shot. But he does those kind of things often. Now, let's talk a little bit about the table that they're playing on. This particular table gives up balls on the break, and I believe that's going to favor Reyes because of the two players out there, Strickland obviously has the better break. If the table was stingy in the regard of giving up balls off of the break, then it would favor Strickland because he, he probably would earn more opportunities with the bigger break. 
Now, by this table, Gilling got more balls on the break. I think that's a kind of an equalizer for, for Reyes because he'll then yeah. get opportunities that he wouldn't have gotten on a tougher breaking table. Definitely. I mean, Earl's hitting him 100 mile an hour, and Reyes has found a, found a speed. It's a little bit off speed, and he's making the corner ball every time. Let's see if the three goes. Hit a three didn't go that time. And neither did anything else. Therefore, no. in game number one, very quickly, Efren Reyes, the player coming out of the chair, has the first opportunity to get onto the board. And that's so important, isn't it? Oh, this, is, is, this is the big one. You've got to focus, 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 focus. You've got to win this game. If you, if you miss this rack, I mean, your whole mental frame of mind for this particular match goes downhill from there on out. Needless to say that if you win this first game and then you break the balls, get another opportunity, win a couple more games and string, a couple more games, then the incoming player, your opponent, may be a little bit tight. And then if he errors at that, uh, at that time, then it's all yours. Exactly, exactly. That's why this first game is so important. He's got a fairly easy run out here. I mean, he's, he's probably going to just, uh, I would draw this cue ball instead of punch it. I would draw it up two cushions, back to where he is and back out to the middle of the table. Notice the position of the six and the eight near the right-hand side pocket. He's going to have to He's going to have to get a pretty good shot on the six, considering the position of the seven cross tables. So therefore, that may be the crucial area of this particular rack. Yeah, but the balls are laying good. If he gets on the four ball, he'll just bounce out further in the middle of the table for the five and just come over to the side cushion to make sure he gets the angle on the six to go over for the seven. You don't want to be in the middle of the table shooting the six ball because then you can't get back for the seven. Right. You want to be on the right-hand side of the six ball. Now, he's opted to play position for the four up to the other pocket, which really wasn't that bad of an idea considering that there was a little that could go wrong with that particular right. shot. Right. In fact, that was a better selection than I choose because I couldn't see the angle there because if he had come out two cushions, he could have came a little long behind the seven. Hit that a little roughly, but the, uh, the forgivingness of the pocket accepted the shot. Now, he needs to be somewhere to the right behind the six, playing position for the upper right-hand corner. Right. He'll be closer to the cushion. He's going to bounce out here. Let's see how far he bounces out. He's in a little trouble, though. Okay, now he's on the wrong side of the sixth ball. He shows a little signs of disgust with his body language, which you, we picked up. You see the Bailey. angle on this Excuse me, Bill. You see the angle on this shot here? You can get a good view of it on the screen here. If he draws the ball, it's a dead scratch, so he's going to have to force the draw out of the scratch here. He's going to have to draw it, force it to the side cushion below the eight ball. In other words, the cushion on this side of the eight ball. He's falling this ball, but he's going to hit the eight. He can't follow the ball. He's got to force draw it, just miss the side pocket, and then spin two cushions for the seven in the side. Well, the other option he has is just to float down a couple, maybe a 12 inches or so, and just accept the uh, the angle on the seven because it's natural position. Well, he's going to do this. He's making up his mind now percentage-wise what's, what's better for him at this stage of the game. If he feels confident, he might roll up, but he's doing what I said. He's forcing the, the draw. Watch the force on the draw. No, he followed up. Well, he feels confident. By shooting a shot like that, you feel confident because the seven ball is like one of the toughest shots on the table. You're crossing the ball. The ball could skid on you. Anything can happen. He's hitting this with a center ball, maybe just a little bit of right-hand spin. Hit it perfect. He's playing with a lot of confidence. Anybody who goes for that shot in the beginning instead of drawing back is playing with a lot of confidence. Well, he's the only uh, undefeated player in the tournament, and there's no one that has beaten him, and he has the confidence that he can go on and win the title. And if that shot is any indication how he's going to perform the rest of the match, I don't think he's going to be stopped. Well, that's why I picked him in the beginning of the match. Game number one goes to Reyes, and he gets on the board first. Leading in the match one game to zero. By the way, this is a race to 13, unlike the semifinals, which raced to 11. And, and the, the matches before that, were they, were, were, they were all a race to 11. This is a race to 13. So, therefore, you, you have a little more time to overcome a lead. There's going to be some racks around here, Billy. I mean, the pockets are playing generous, like you said, and, and they're breaking. Usually the corner ball has been going. The first racket didn't go. But, uh, like I said, it's been going almost every time, and, uh, and the pockets are generous. I mean, through the whole tournament, you've been seeing a lot of twos and threes and four racks run. I mean, if a guy got a five or six game lead, you're still in the game. Absolutely. There actually isn't a lead that's, that's not surmountable because of the very reason that Rarity described. The forgiveness of the pockets and the balls open up quite nicely. The cloth is fairly fast. So, therefore, that's all conducive to offensive, offensive play, and that's what we've seen throughout the tournament, and there's no reason why we shouldn't see it here in this match. Yeah, well, watch him. He's not going to hit this at full power, I don't think. I mean, especially starting out right here, he's going to see where the two is going. He's been making a corner ball with about three-quarter, maybe about 80% speed, and see if he hits about 80% right here. 
about 80%. And once again, you were right the corner ball directly into the He's into got the, the speed pocket. down perfect for that shot. But what do you do? How do you stop that if you are the person racking the balls? I mean, if the corner ball starts going in, is it fairly little you can do about it? Well, I mean, uh, some guys would try to cheat if they're racking for themselves or I mean, racking for the other guy. They would split the back two balls behind the nine, but the players won't let them do that. And once you find, form a groove in that clot, because this is 860 Simonis forms grooves, uh, it just seems to slide no matter if you rack the balls higher or lower or whatever. So therefore, when you consider that they have uh, someone racking the balls for both players, that corner ball may go in with really regularity. No, I've seen it go, uh, I mean, if they play 21 games, I've seen it go 20, 20 times. He's got a fairly easy run out here. Things are going to start working for him. Things are going good for him. Of course, things have been going good for Earl. I mean, he played uh, Luat. Luat missed the ninth. It was 10-10. Luat missed the nine straight in. Uh, and things have been going to, good for uh, Efren, too. Here he's got a really easy run out here. I mean, the balls are just connected dots. I mean, the five, six, seven in the corner. Yeah, eight the six the is placed very conveniently for the no, for the seven, perfect. considering the position of the seven. Perfect. Looks like you have to draw. Might have to draw back and forth. Yeah. But it's a simple shot. Yeah, he's going to jump out to the two nothing lead here, and then. Uh, I mean, if he gets a four or five game lead here, well, even a couple three game lead. I mean, if Earl misses. When he has his opportunity the first time up, then, then it's going to be a landslide. Well, the shot and the angle that he has now suggests, at least to me from my vantage point, that he doesn't need to go down table very far. He doesn't want to go down table as far as where the nine is. He wants to fall short of that because he has a nice shot on the eight, and the nine's far away from, uh, from that rail for him to play. Uh, yeah, see, I don't like the shot. I would have, I would have stopped short of the nine. But he's playing with so much confidence. See, if you're not playing with confidence, just stop it here. But if you're playing with a lot of confidence, you can control that cue ball to a matter of inches. And that's what he's doing right now. He has excellent control of the cue ball. He owns this table. When you know how, how a table plays, the, the speed of the table, how, how the rails are playing, then, then the caliber of players like Efren Reyes, Earl Strickland, just own the table. And uh, the magician right now is showing us how easily it is to play on the table that you're comfortable playing on. Game number two goes to Reyes who now leads in the match by a score of two games to zero. And, and I made a statement in the, in the uh, semifinals that you know, when you go into a match like this, you don't play your opponent, you play at the table. Because by the, by, the, by the time you're in the semifinals, you should know how the table was playing. And so there, therefore, you just play against the table. If you have the speed down at the table and you play it nicely, then for you're defeating the table and you probably will win. Well, most people ask me the question, how do you get rid of pressure? And, uh, and one thing you just said, they, well, you never play the player. This is a one-on-one -on -one sport, but you're not really up at the table the same time he is. So, I mean, what he does up there has nothing to do with you. You have to play yourself. Just play the game and focus, focus, focus. Like I said, that's the best way to get rid of pressure. And, uh, I mean, if you're playing, if you have confidence, that eliminates pressure anyway. That eliminates a heck of a lot of it. Yeah. Here again, watch this again. 80% speed, corner ball, two ball in a corner pocket. Well, what happened there? Billy? I don't know. When he broke the balls, the wing ball, which we were watching, the two ball, didn't hardly even move. No, it seems like the balls were separated then, like it was like a lead rack. But he off hit it anyway. He hit the side of the one ball. That's why the cue ball flew off the table. Right. Had he hit the one ball squarely, I, uh, I'm i kind of curious on how that two ball would have reacted because even though he didn't hit the one ball squarely, I thought he should have got much more moving from the wing ball. Than no, ex did. Exactly. The balls weren't frozen. That's what happened there. To me, it would have seemed that the, 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 the two balls in front of the nine ball weren't touching. Weren't touching the nine ball. Or maybe the one ball was just off. Well, that gave Earl an opportunity here to get back in the game fast. Here, here's, a, here's a good shot, Billy. I think he's got to go underneath the five and come up. No, he might play the three straight up in the corner, too. But if you want, he can go. I'll see the way he's hitting the cue ball. It looks like he's going underneath the five and two cushions up. No, he's playing a three and a quarter, like I said. I think he chose the best route yeah. because of the position of the four. And also, if he plays position for the three in the upper left-hand corner, all he needs to do now is follow the ball. Yeah. And he has much better control of the speed of the cue ball with this particular shot because he needs an angle to get back down table for the five. Yeah, the less you make the cue ball travel, the better off you are. This is straight down the table for the five. Yeah, he desperately needed a break, uh, just like the one that he, that he received to get back into the match. Yeah, he can either play this ball, uh, well, play position for the six in the side, or the corner. I don't think he came up high. Yes, he did. He's all right. 
Well, he's fallen a little short of the mark. I mean, the the, uh, the ideal angle naturally would have been straight on the seven or, or, or a, a slightly angle favoring the uh, upper part of the seven, which then he would have then played position for the eight in the lower yeah, corner. Or excuse me, the upper corner. But he's okay. You're right. He's okay. I, I didn't think Here, he Here's a shot, that. Billy. I mean, he, he, a lot of players would go right into the eight ball. The best way to play this shot is come two cushions around the table. Well, the eight goes in the side pocket. I didn't even see it going in the side pocket. But if the eight couldn't go in the side pocket, you were better off coming around two cushions because you can't go wrong with the speed. Oh, wow. Oh, hit that wide. Hit it very, very thinly. I didn't think there I thought for a moment that there was a possibility that ball may have not fallen, but that wasn't the case. Game number three goes to Earl Strickland, and now he trails by one game in the match, two games to one in a race to 13. Let's take another look at the, the break when one Reyes broke the ball. So take a look at the contact of the one. Where does he hit the one? He's going to hit the one on the left-hand side here for sure because that's why it flies off the table. See it? That could have been the whole reason why the balls didn't explode, Billy. I mean, he really hit that off to the left. And I really can't overemphasize the importance of, of controlling the cue ball on the break, particularly when you get to the stage of the tournament. Because whenever you get to this stage of the tournament, the semifinals, or, and particularly in the finals, you're, you're facing, obviously, another upper echelon player. And mistakes like that can prove to be quite costly at times. Perhaps maybe even too costly. Oh, for sure, because like you said in the beginning, I mean, if, if Efren kept him in his chair for a couple, three games, and then he had to come up with a tough shot, he's he, he liable to miss a tough shot, where on that particular cue ball off the table, gave him cue ball in hand and let him get his rhythm back. You had tremendous action off of, off, of, off of that particular break. The six ball may have come in between the cue ball and the one ball, precluding him from pocketing the one in the upper right-hand corner. From my vantage point, I really can't tell. No, by I looking at the monitor, I don't think he can pocket no, the one. No, I don't think he can either. I mean, he's probably going to wind up bank in this one ball. But he's looking to see if he can get position on the two ball. I mean, he could if he could cross this and come into the two ball or go three cushions. He's coming into the two. He uh, looks like he made a good shot on the yeah. one. Excellent speed of the cue ball, finally coming to rest in almost an ideal position on the table for the two. Now, he hit that bank with a lot of confidence, Billy. I mean, most guys would have been trying to, to play a two-way shot, make the one and get a snooker involved at the same time. He just went for the shot and made the shot. That's really aggressive offense. Back and forth across the table for the three. And all of a sudden, this match may be tied up. At one time, Reyes was leading in the match two games, nothing in preparation to break, in breaking the balls in game number three. What he did was he erred. He made a foul on the break, hopping off the table. Strickland's been at the table since. This is, this is a, a Cosmo, as we used to call it. They still call it a Cosmo? Well, the older players call it a Cosmo yeah. because the younger players don't know who Cosmo is. Really, yes. You want to tell him who, they, who he was? No, you can do that. Cosmo was a guy who used to come around Johnson City. as a funny-looking guy with big rimmed glasses, and he used to bring a bring a suitcase full of all these tricks that he uh, did exhibitions with, and uh, he was a professional dancer, ballet-type dancer. And he used to set the balls out around the table to hold nine balls to where he could stop the cue ball on every single shot, and then when he finally made the nine ball, he would stop the cue ball on a $100 bill. But while he did the clearance... He did a ballet dance around the table and just spun around the table and he just turned the cue stick into the shot, stopped the cue ball, and did the whole shot. It was, it was a real easy out except for the dance thing. Right. And that was a Cosmo. But uh, the significance of the dance was this layout is so easy I can dance around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was like stop, you know, connect the dots. Right, boom, exactly. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Yeah. So therefore, any time an opportunity arose where a player had to connect a dot, run out, they would refer to it as a Cosmo. Exactly. Game number four goes to Strickland. He ties up the match two games apiece. See if he hits him full speed here. Watch the eight. See, the eight's not going when you hit it full speed. All the balls are up table, looking on one side of the table. And, uh, but he didn't make, now here he's going to go for a 2 9 combination next, I think. Yeah. Okay, right away, Jimmy picked that up. You know, I myself, I would have had taken a, 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 a lot more time. Well, in, in well he's, out I, the I noticed the, the three ball was against the cushion with the seven block, and so you look for the combination first off. You see, the three balls tied up anyway. Very uncharacteristic of the way Reyes plays. He played himself out of line on a 2-9 I, I did not like that positional shot because he came one cushion where you have like a little area to stop. And if he did drew the cue ball towards the left-hand pocket and came two cushions into the two, you have a lot more area to stop for the position. But doesn't matter as good no. as he pockets the balls. I mean, it's uh, you get anywhere. 
Right. Nevertheless, uh, he, he got the job done, uh, probably not as easily as he should have, but nevertheless, he got the job done. And with that pocketing of the nine, he leads the match with a score of three games to two. See, on, on, on shots when you're playing position, a lot of guys ask how you play position. When, you, when the cue ball, you don't want the cue ball to cross an angle for position. In other words, coming across the table, across the angle of the next shot, you always want to come into the angle of the next shot so you have a bigger area to stop in. So therefore, you want the cue ball to follow the line. Follow the, the line, exactly. You draw an imaginary line from the pocket through the ball, and if you can get the cue ball to come toward that object ball on that line, then you're on the right angle for exactly. position. Here we go. He will not fit this one. Nine ball. Nine ball. Nine. Now, he's made the nine ball quite often. In, in his match against Earl's, Earl Strickland last night, he made the nine ball three times on the break. Three times. And he defeated Strickland, by the way, last night, I, 11 games to eight. I know it. Uh, and Earl asked me why that ball is going. I can't believe Earl asked me that question because the reason that nine goes is when you're breaking from the, like the left-hand side of the table, he's breaking from here. If the crack of the ball's between the... Let's see where he puts this rack, and I'll show you. So in the meantime, that was game number six. Reyes now leads by two games in a match, four games to two. I think it's a three ball here, Billy. See the three ball? Yes. If that's separated from the nine ball and the other ball next to it, I think it's the four ball, is froze to the nine ball, and you break from the left-hand side of the pocket, the nine always comes towards this pocket. So therefore, the ball that is in back of the nine, either, either the right or the left, if it's loosened up somewhat and you break from the opposite side, or the same side. The same side as the loose then ball. Then the ball will go toward the side yes. where the ball is loosened. Yes, watch it. That time it went to the right, so apparently. Yeah, apparently they were froze. Right. Okay, let's take a look at the break. See, the four there is separated from the nine. That's why it's going to go. Or the seven. Must what is it? On the left side, the seven. Oh, it was a two. I couldn't tell the color. The seven. Now the seven kisses it in. It didn't go straight in. I, I thought it went straight in, but it didn't go straight in. But it doesn't have to go straight in for that uh, for that uh, little bit of uh, right, for the space to be there. Uh, error to be effective. Right. In the meantime, Strickland steps to the table with a very difficult shot, not only on the one, but also a difficult shot to play position for the two to drop for the three, which is down this end of the table. See, he, like, he was trying to shoot this. He knows he has to follow the shot for position, but he doesn't want it because he shoots this shot better jacked up. What he wanted to do was try to make the four... That's why he tried to elevate like that. He wanted to see if he could make the four. Missed it. See, the, the position of the three almost frozen on the bottom cushion makes that shot play much more difficult because you have to get a good angle on the two to drive for a position for the exactly. three. So perhaps uh, that was asking a little bit too much to play position for the two. Maybe he would have been better off possibly trying to pocket the billiard on the one four. And then, well, uh, he could have played for the angle. Eddie Taylor showed me that how, how to play most of those shots. In other words, don't get to try to get the angle for the two to come straight down. Play the, for the angle on the two like he could have went underneath the five and come three cushions. It's always easier to go three cushions than, than to judge speed coming off one. Yeah, he still had a lot of traffic there. He had the five and also the eight to contend with or with, uh, choosing that particular route. The, the accessibility to the three in that particular route was, you know, fraught with pearls, pretty dangerous, but... Uh, he didn't do that, and Everett's at the table. Yeah, he's got a 6-9 combination coming up after these three balls. He's just going to draw this two cushions and out. Make sure you don't get above the four. He's fine. The four is really close to the pocket. Yeah, it's so. close. And it looks like the 6-9 is dead. Well, you win a lot of games fast, and you get a one on the break, then another combination, and another combination. I mean, look at how many games he won <laughs> so fast here. I guess the nine is dead, isn't it, Billy? Well, I mean, you got much better eyes than me. You were talking about how good your eyes were the other day. You know, well, I was telling I'm, how bad mine were. I'm betting he's going to shoot it. I'm, I'm sure he's not going to try to play position for it, that's for sure. Well, if you're betting on something, I want to bet on it, too. Though. Okay, yeah. You like my style, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> he likes my one-loss record. Well, apparently it, it wasn't dead or straight in, so therefore that's why he positioned the cue ball slightly behind the six, feeling that maybe he has to cut the nine somewhat into the pocket. And oh, he oh, overcut it. it. Boy, he shot that awful fast. He didn't even look at that ball. Combinations are so tough, you have to look at every little thing that you're, you're doing with English, with speed, everything. You just can't get up and hit a combination no matter how easy it looks. That was a, 
a big mental area. That could change the whole flow of this game. Well, any one mistake by either player could change the whole flow and the outcome of the game, of the match. But uh, but that was a careless error. Yeah, he was he was uh, definitely a favorite to pocket that combination. See, now uh, Earl didn't even take a chance on coming above the eight ball. He figured he's playing uh, good enough to judge the speed and just go up and down the table with the eight. Sometimes you you can do that; it makes the shot easier. You got to watch. Okay, he hit perfect. And he sure sure did. He hit the position of the Earl that suggested that he knew exactly the reaction that was going to take place off the bottom cushion, and he did at the game number seven. It's Earl Strickland now trailing by only one game in the match, four games to three. Yeah, I was really surprised to see Reyes miss the nine, particularly as, as uh, by the margin that he missed it. No. He missed it by a, a good three inches. But he didn't so. even get up and look at it. I mean, he just like kind of hit the ball, thought it was a dead shot or something. You have to look at those combinations. That was a big game. 5-2, him breaking. Now it's 4-3, Earl breaking. Big. Earl's dying to go look at the rack, but he didn't go look at it. All of a sudden, there was a light that went out above the table. And what we're going to need to do now is we're going to probably have to take a break in the action and go up there and put another light bulb in there. I believe either a whole side went out or maybe it was just one or two of them. But definitely there were some lights that went out there. Well, so far, nobody's shooting the lights out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that, that the reason the light went out it was it wasn't because of the players? Oh, <laughs> there we are. Someone wants to hit the Kick light the switch. Plug out. There's a there's a, a spectator, there's a spectator that was watching the match on the other side of the room and inadvertently pulled the plug out of the wall, which then turned the lights out. So uh, Rick Bowling fixed that up. Earl's changing location for the break. And he's telling the uh, the referee that the one is separated from the top two balls. But he is going to change location. He's going to break from the center of the table. This is the way we used to break all the time. We were playing on a heavier cloth. We were playing on that, that on the Mali, you know, 80, 20 or some, whatever it used to be, 80, 20. No, he moved it back to the side. He's going to give it one more try over here, I think. So far, he hasn't made the corner ball. He's going to watch to see where the eight's going. See, eight's hitting high. It's hitting Eight. high because he keeps breaking it with the same velocity. Exactly. And it's, and it's very, very hard. He's getting a lot of force and into the balls, and he's not getting the action that he wants off the eight. I guess he's going to have to take a little bit off his break or else change sides. He's definitely going to change sides after that break. So the, even though he was able to put down the ball on the break, he wasn't really happy with the results. Sometimes when you when you get good results, you don't have to be happy with them considering the kind of action that you want to get and you're not getting. All right. Well, he stopped that cue ball on a dime there. He got perfect position on the three ball. Just going to slide over just a little bit for the four. Shoot the four, pound the ball a little bit, go in the same pocket. No, he's going to follow this play to five in the opposite pocket. Now let's connect the dots again. The old Cosmo shot straight into the six ball off the cushion. Seven, oh, yeah. eight, nine. Right. There's no reason to play position for the side pocket there because you're in line playing it for the corner. And once you're in line on the six ball, it's connect the dots like Jimmy said. So therefore, yeah. once you have position, there's no reason for you to play it. And that's what we're talking about coming into the angle. See, when he shot the six coming into the seven, or when he shot the five coming into the six, it was on one straight line towards the angle of the shot. That's exactly right. This is game number eight with the pocketing of the nine. This match, once again, will be dotted up now with the score being four games for each player. Got a nice crowd here. Reno always has a nice crowd. Knowledgeable fans. Eleven years we've been coming here, Billy. Yeah, this is the 21st tournament. Amazing. Eleven years. There's a gentleman out there who has, a, who has a, a headset on. His name is Paul, the fellow with the beard, a full beard. How you doing, Paul? <laughs> oh, You're on TV, you Paul. You acknowledge you. <laughs> <laughs> so now you got to buy this tape. <laughs> Here we go. He, he, I can't believe he went to the same location. 
Able. able. He, he let up a little bit, like he, you said he, he might. He let up. In fact, the eight was going to hit on the bottom cushion, but it got kissed in on the way in. He was unlucky enough not to get a shot, though. It's really amazing how perceptive the players are on the tour today. I mean, intricate things like taking speed off of your break shot changes the the action of, of, of the balls enough to pocket the corner ball. It's amazing that, that players can figure stuff like that out, really. Well, let's see. We're going to get into some safety play here. He's, I think, can he kick behind that and kick it up, or he's just going to... Oh, I don't know. He tried to just cross that. Yeah, that was a pretty good shot. He just tried to cross it and put it up above the seven ball where he couldn't make the ball. I think he might have left him a bank here. Maybe. I don't know if he has or not because his body language certainly hasn't given me an indication one way or the other. It looks like that he has not left him a bank. It looks like it may be fairly close, but uh, I don't think it's available. If he can't make the bank, there's hardly any kind of shot here unless he unless he shoots to the bottom cushion, tries to come across the ball and send the cue ball up table. He's going to try to massay this ball. He's massaying it around this ball. Well, if he can get around it. Or no, he played it safe. He just tried to stick the cue ball. That was the best he could do on that shot. Just well, make sure you separate right. the balls, put the, put the one on, I mean, put the cue ball on the cushion. At least, if anything he has going for him, it's the position of the cue ball against the cushion. Yeah, Earl's just going to roll this one to the cushion, bounce the one out and back of the two, and put the cue ball behind the two ball. If he has the angle to do it. That's what he's doing. He's going to roll this ball. Good pool players hate the roll, just roll the cue ball, because you never know when it's going to roll off or dip to one side or the other. So he's got to hit this really soft, knock it above here, and he's good. Well, he has left uh, Ray as a kick uh, underneath the two. And to hit the ball, but it's pretty tough to get a safety out of the shed. He may kick it in the side because uh, that side pocket is pretty large from this. No, angle. he's not going to go for the side. He's going to try to hit the one ball on the bottom side. See, if he hits the one ball on the bottom side with draw English, the angle it looks like it's going to the one's going to go into the six ball. The cue ball is going to come back down behind the nine ball. Watch this shot. Can he get in that deeply to do it? Yes, yes that's what he tried to yeah, do. See, exactly. see? He did exactly what you used to describe he might do. If he hit a little bit harder, the cue ball would have came right behind the nine ball. And I think he's got rewarded for it because the three may preclude him from pocketing the one in the upper right-hand corner. And if that's the case, uh, I don't know if he even has a very good safety. He's going to cross the ball. He's just going to bank the one ball back down the table, let the cue ball float to the right-hand cushion and put him behind the seven ball and let the cue ball, and let the one ball come down the table. That's exactly what he's doing. Straight up and down the table. Oh, he hit the seven on the way well, in. He hit the one uh, to the, the full. The three he ball, he yeah. should have hit a further to the right on the one, which would have then allowed him to uh, avoid the contacting of the seven. And wind up with the, the snooker. Three, that is. And wind up with the snooker. Yeah, it was a three ball. I thought it was a seven, too. <clears throat> Here's a tough shot. I mean, really tough. He's jacked up over the three ball. He's got to elevate. And he's got to use a little bit of right-hand spin. Makes this shot really tough. He's aiming Very at tough. almost a full ball here because the ball's going to swerve into it. Very tough shot. He got lucky here. He got lucky is right because the position of the one not even in the pocket, two or three inches from the pocket and hooked behind the four. Yeah. Earl's going to mass say this a little bit, I think, or play that one off the cushion. Unless he can make this ball. Can he make this ball? Yeah, he can make the ball. He played it off the cushion. There's no pocket over here. Well, he's going to get lucky here, but uh, he still has a lot of work in pocketing of the two. He's going to probably go for the upper left-hand corner. Plus the four has uh, only got one pocket. Here's here's the shot. He's going to play the two ball in the corner, bounce out to like center of the table, then go three cushions with the three ball back for the four in the, in the left-hand bottom pocket. Okay, that's one route that he can choose, or that's one option. Another option is he possibly can locate the cue ball behind the six. He's, the he's left, not taking no chance. He's playing safe. Yeah, behind the six, hitting the left-hand side of the two. He's going to try to go behind the six. Now, now, there's a for, for an example, for instance, that uh, he knows he's not playing with a lot of confidence, Billy, because I've seen good players go for that shot because it, the percentage is in your favor if you're playing good. And he could because now he can lose the game. But by shooting the two and having the confidence, you can make the two ball. It was an easy run out after that. Not easy, but, I mean, it was a, was a, a good out. Here, he can get lucky here. He definitely See? played the two there. Yep. Okay, now he's confronted with the problem of getting the cue ball back down table for position for the four. But if 
it, now, after after playing position for the four in the lower left hand corner, the five is positioned at the other end of the table near yeah. the uh, the uh, head spot. And the seven's in the way for the go to cushion. He's exactly. going to fall on this ball. I don't know if I would have fallen on this ball. He played a cushion first. That's an old Irving Crane shot. When you're shooting a long shot like that and the ball's just a, a hair away from the cushion, it's a lot easier to make the ball by going to the cushion first. And he got on the right side of the four where he didn't have to fiddle with the seven ball, so it's just two cushions up for the five right, ball. Right, so therefore the uh, the uh, cushion first shot was ideal oh, perfect in, shot, in yeah. a couple of different regards. Yep. Fall down to the cushion on the five ball if he can, so you have the angle on the six ball, just come one cushion down for the seven. Yeah, once again, you don't want to really go away from the seven. Two cushions are out of the upper right-hand corner. Right. You would rather go either underneath the six, playing position off the side cushion toward the seven, or one cushion even toward the side pocket here. You would like to go toward the side pocket, which would... Uh, he's not going to go two cushions on this because he's just going to come straight down the table and take the shot. No, he is going two cushions. Oh, I don't like that. No. No, I don't like that at all. No, I, I I would have never played it like that. I would have played near the near the side over there yeah. and accepted that shot on the seven, rather than run the risk of putting the cue ball behind the nine. But if you have that much confidence in in the speed of the of, of the cue ball, well, that's what he did before. Yeah. He did that was the second time he did that. Remember the other shot where he had followed the ball and went underneath the nine for position. Same thing he did there. Right. So after game number nine, uh, Efren Reyes takes the lead once again by the score of five games to four. But I, I still, well, for, for my game, in most other games, I think that you, it would uh, work out better more often if you would play position for the seven in the other fashion by staying above the nine, uh, opposed to going two cushions away from the ball and coming well, back to... Well, maybe from this angle, we've seen the wrong angle on the seven ball. Maybe the seven was closer to the cushion than we thought. If that was the case, then he did it the right way, because when you're coming three cushions into the bottom cushion like that, I mean... the. the the English reverses off the, off the second cushion when it hits the third cushion and dies the cue ball. So you've got right. a big area to stop it. There's uh, Jimmy Wedge to the left with the red shirt on, Reed Pierce with the uh, blue shirt on, the man with the beard to the right. And the guy in the middle, we don't know. I think he's from uh, Minnesota. He's a friend of Jimmy's. Okay, here we go with the break again. Watch the seven ball. It hit high. One, two in the side, three in the corner, four is open in the... I don't know if he can make the one ball. Oh, he cannot make the one? No, I don't think so. He might go to the cushion and just try to make this ball off the cushion. As big as these pockets are playing, I mean, it's not a bad shot because there's no other safety there or anything. Well, he's, like, he's making up the, his mind on the percentage whether to play a safe off this shot or, or go for the kick off the cushion to make the one ball. He's playing the one ball. Well, I don't know about that shot. I mean, even if uh, he did what he wanted to do, I think, but uh, there's no reward for that, is there, Billy? No, no, not really. Uh, now, this is a very interesting uh, situation that's developed here. Efren Reyes cuts balls as thinly as anybody in the world. And this is a shot that requires a very thin hit. And he's drawn his three cushions for the two in the same corner. No, but he's he, going for the side. He missed that too. Yeah, he wasn't able to cut it thinly enough. And now the cue ball stops somewhere between the two four, leaving Strickland a pretty good shot. But the angle really isn't ideal. He's going to bounce off the cushion here, try to get straight in on the two ball. Just stop the cue ball then. He didn't get straight in, so he'll have to pound this two ball or, or bounce it off the cushion and come back out right around where the two is again. Yeah, well, this, guy, this is the type of uh, shot that he, uh, that he enjoys shooting. He'll shoot this well. you got to watch you don't come too far. Well, I guess there was a lot of room for the ball to pass. Well, he's looking at it. Maybe he can't make the three. Made it a little expression there. Well, I think uh, it, it's a little close, but I do believe he can pocket the three. And he's just going to draw it up table for the four on the side, I think. No, he's going to take the long shot. Well, uh, uh, apparently... Uh, he had to spin it a little bit. Right. He had to rely on the English to turn the three into the pocket. So, therefore, that precluded him from drawing the cue ball up table for position for the four on the side. Now he has to take another testy shot to get through this rack. 
no problem. Watch, watch the, the eight, eight ball. Watch the eight. Oh, well, he was able to uh, <laughs> go into the eight without uh, I know having the eight being an interfering ball, so therefore he was able to get over that obstacle. Yeah, I know he didn't want to run into the eight. Good players don't really like to run into balls unless you have to. But sometimes at the shot that you're left with... Uh, yeah, you have to. You know, you have to or else uh, you'll diminish the accuracy too much of the shot. Hmm. Well, this is going back and forth, isn't it? Nobody wants to take control. There's been a lot of opportunity to take control on this match by effort, and he just never, hasn't done it yet. You can't mess around with Earl too much. He's going to get a little rhythm here and hit you with a three or four. Well, I don't think he's messing around with him much. <laughs> well, I know. That was <laughs> just a <laughs> figure. <laughs> well, I think I'll let Earl win this game, and I'll come back on him later in the match. Well, I mean, there's been a lot of balls missed in this session. At the game number 10, once again, the match is tied up. Now the score being five games for Strickland, five games for Reyes. Yeah, Earl's starting to get uh, a lot more comfortable out there. Had Reyes taken advantage of the opportunities that he's presented with, I think that Earl would have been fairly tight. But he's talking to the crowd, and he's at least uh, showing some gestures that he's loose now and comfortable. There's Francine Massey, Mike Massey's wife. She's taking the pictures now. I believe she's... Uh, from she Pool and Billiard Magazine. From Pool and Billiard Magazine? Yeah. Pool and Billiard Magazine. You know, I knew it was either Pool and Billiard or Billiard Dice because I wasn't quite sure which one it was, but it's Pool and Billiard Magazine. I don't believe Earl is staying with that same break, even though he's made a ball there. That corner ball isn't going nowhere near it. I mean, uh, neither player, maybe, should, maybe should, they should try to go to the other side of the table. But Earl's just staying there. He made a ball, so I guess he's happy. And he's got a, got a nice little run out here. All he has to do is get on a three ball. If he gets on a three, then it's over. He should just go in between the seven and nine, playing yeah, the three for, up for the corner. The, no, for the side pocket. Anymore. Side? Okay, if, if he's straight in on the side, I agree with it. But if he has that angle that favors the up table, I don't know if I would have liked that. Yeah, but he played position for the side pocket. It was a natural shot. Mm -hmm. Which keeps him in line for the four, which is nice because the five is adjacent to the nine. After popping the four, he'll then be right in line for the five. Now he's in perfect line for the five. He'll just probably force it up for the seven. Yeah, just straight up the table. He's got a little bit on the wrong side of the seven ball here, so he's going to either have to draw it to right across the table and back out or go two cushions. I'd prefer to draw it right across the table and back out. Stay a little closer to the eight ball this way. Yeah, that's what he did. It's easier to judge. Got a new leader. Is this the first time in the match he's had yep. the lead? Yes, it is. And like Rebbe says, after game number 11, we have a new leader. Earl Strickland, for the first time in the match, takes the lead with the score now being six games for Strickland, five for Reyes. Benches are a little empty there. Everybody must be on that seventh uh, inning stretch. And there's uh, a lovely couple. Mr. and Mrs. Piona, Chris and Dave Piona. Chris works for the Billiards Digest. She's taking her shots, and Francine Massey, Pool and Billiard, taking her shots on the other side. Nice couple. Yes. He stayed in the same location. The four got kissed in that time. It didn't go straight in. And he snookered behind the eight ball. And jacked up over the two. Well, if he snuck it behind the... Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> jacked up uh, over the two, which is overkill. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's tough to push on this ball, though, Billy. I mean, uh, I mean, where are you going to put the guy? I mean, you can't push him uh, to the top cushion because then he's going to play safe. Looks like you're going to have to push for a kick here. Yep, that's exactly right. I was going to get to that. A lot of players feel like you always have to push for a, for a shot where you can see the ball. A lot of times you don't. When in this kind of circumstance, he's going to, I think he's going to push for a kick. But it's difficult to even push for a kick in this situation because he would like the eight ball to be down table a little farther and the cue ball to be down table. That way he can push so he can kick the, the one ball toward this yeah. end of the table. Yeah, it's but really he doesn't lane. have that option. It's really late in a tough spot. Yeah, he so might just shoot for a, Even if you push for a long shot here, the guy's going to take it. He's going to... Uh, he's, tie up I, the 7-3? He's going he's to push. He might be pushing for a jump shot. 
he just looked at putting the cue ball where the seven ball is and jumping over the five ball because he knows he jumps the ball a lot better than And than at the ever. same time, he'll be tying up the three and the seven. And he, he might really, do that. He's, yeah. he's looking at it again. No, he don't like that either. He's, he's going to kick, kick right now. He's going to kick now. I don't think I would kick now. I would tie up the seven three and go yeah, for the jump. tie up something first. He's got to get lucky here. Look at this. Well, there's a shot we didn't see. Well, I, I don't know what he expected to do on that shot. The percentage was really against him on that. You know, you brought up a really valid point when you said he jumps the ball so well. Why wouldn't he tie up the three and opt to go ahead and jump over the five, even if he didn't execute it the way he would like? Still the three. <laughs> oh, look at that one. The one went in yeah. before the nine. <laughs> Still the three and the five, seven would have been tied up. Uh huh. I think he made a uh, wrong selection there. It was definitely a judgment Bad error on his part. Bad That's percentage. game number e, excuse me, 12, that is. Once again, the match is knotted up six games apiece now. Well, so you have the extra equity in tying up the three. If he, if he shoots the seven into the three and ties up the three, naturally, Reyes is going to pass the shot because he's not going to be able to jump right. over, the, over, the, over right. the, the bye or whatever. Or even if he elected to kick the shot. I mean, he's not going to do that either. He's going to let him shoot the shot, but right. the three would be tied up like right. you're talking about. That's the extra equity that he probably mm -hmm. would have needed in this particular action. He was at a great disadvantage. Now the eight went eight, straight and in. There's the nine. There's nine. The one ball went to the middle of, middle of the cushion. Well, you're going to see a safety here if he can hit the edge of the one. See, he, go he, around the seven. Around the seven, tie him up by them behind that bunch of balls there, two, six, and three. He would really like to. He would like to be put him behind the three, but he don't want to run the risk of scratching two cushions right. in the corner. But that's what he's going to do, going underneath the seven. We juiced it a little too much and hit the hit the, the four ball. Well, that's. Uh, I was very surprised to see him uh, miss hit that as badly as he did. I guess he didn't want to run the risk of scratching in the, in the corner, and he lost his concentration. I don't know what happened there, but he hit that terribly. Now it just left a perfect opportunity for uh, Earl to go ahead again. And that type of a shot was, well, it really wasn't all that difficult. I was really surprised to see him not do well with it. Well, I think he was more concerned about getting around the seven where that wasn't that big a deal, I didn't think. I mean, he didn't have to hit that with that much spin. He really juiced the ball on that shot. I mean, he put it. What he hit it with, instead of a little bit of speed. He hit it with all spin to let the spin bring him down table. But when you put that much spin on, you're going to close the angle a little bit. Well, a, a reason possibly why he may have played it in that fashion is because he maybe he wanted to control the one ball by hitting it softer and allow the spin to control the cue ball. Then he would control the one yeah. ball a bit easier. But uh, I don't know what was on his it mind. Cost him, the... cost him a lot. How much uh, still remains to be seen, but it has cost him at least two games, or, you know, a possible two games. Yep. <laughs> well, that was game number 13. Strickland now has to lead seven games to six. Well, even though these guys aren't playing that good right now, nobody plays perfect pool all the time. If you did, I mean, you'd win every tournament, and that's why uh, there's tournaments, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, you can't play perfect all the time. Everybody thinks you're never supposed to miss a ball. Uh, the lag would really be important, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes it is. <laughs> I mean, it would really be in, invaluable. I must win this lag. I, yeah, I don't yeah. want to get shut out again. We, we uh, turn it uh, into a lag tournament. <laughs> Look at the nine again. Oh, we, we just missed a kiss in the five. If, they, if it would have kissed into the five, it may have found no, its way to the ball. No, he didn't make a ball here. But it's a little bit of a tough, uh, tough run out here. Yeah, well, there's two problems that he has. One immediately is position for the two, and the other problem, which isn't as big, is where the position of the four is in, in relation to the five. Mm. So he has He's going to hit this ball with a, like, if, if you were looking at a clock, he's hitting this ball at two o'clock right now. It's a cue ball at two o'clock. Well, no, he, he didn't. Look. He forced it into the six. That was a great shot there. He forced it into the six and then used the angle off the carom of the six for position for the two. That was a good shot. Okay, let's see. Does he have uh, the room to play position for the three in the lower left-hand corner? Yeah, he does, but he's going to stop for the four. But he's going to wind up with an angle to go back and forth across the table. He's trying to get as straight as he can yeah, on right. this three. 
That's good because now the four is right to the left of the three. Yeah. And all he needs to do is control the cue ball. Yeah, he's somewhere in that general area. He's going to pinch this a little bit. Low left hand angle should pinch this in so he doesn't make the cue ball travel. No, he decided to go back and forth. He had a bigger angle than I thought. Sometimes you can pinch that shot and not let the cue ball get away from you. This is all. This is is a center ball, slightly with a little bit of right hand angle. It's just a center ball, I believe, and he'll be able to control it quite really. Just easily. straight back and forth across the table. He needed to apply a little right to yeah, get, make sure he, he assured himself he would get on top of the five. Now he's positioned the cue ball uh, yeah. <laughs> in a very awkward position in, in, in terms of uh, From here I can't tell if he, can, if he can cut the ball into the bottom left-hand corner or uh, he has to go to the right-hand corner. He's on the 50-yard line. I don't think he He's has. spinning this with a lot of uh, right-hand right. English, too, to go three cushions around. That's what he did. Great shot. And he knew that he was going to come very close to contacting the, the seven, too. Mm -hmm. He barely missed the uh, the seven. And it was a tough shot on top of it because when you're hitting that ball with right-hand English, it has a tendency to, to kick on you and throw out. <laughs> well, we're going to be back to even again. This is really a seesaw game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so therefore, in, in that regard, this, this match has been... Exciting because it's been closely and sharply contested the entire way. Game number 14. <clears throat> so far it has the makings of a 12-12er. Seven games apiece after 14 games. I got a prediction now. I think uh, Efren's just go ahead and take the lead right now and just come right out. That's my prediction. We've been waiting long enough here for a little acceleration. Well, Efren uh, was able to put the corner ball in the last time he broke the balls, so therefore, uh, if he can break the balls and pocket the corner ball on this particular rack, he may end up with a shot, and which will, you know, continue or sustain his, his, his uh, momentum. Sixth ball was, is the wing ball. We're looking for that to come either close or go into the right-hand corner pocket. One high. High again. No balls on the break. A lot of traffic in between the one and the cue ball. The eight, the two, and the four. Yeah. And he's behind no the shot. eight. No shot. And another, another position where it's difficult to push. Earl's saying something. What do you say, Billy? I don't know, uh, but uh, if he pushes down by the three ball, he's going to leave uh, Reyes a, a good safety behind the two four with the cue ball. So therefore, he he's got his work cut out for him here. He's got he's in a very very difficult he, situation. He's looking at pushing behind the five ball right now and using the jump shot. He might if he sticks it here. I mean, it, let's see what he's doing here. Well, he put it over where he can't cross the ball. Yeah, well, he, he he put it in a position where he can't play safe. Yeah, you got to go for the shot. Yeah, you either got to go for the shot or pass it. And if you pass the shot, you could lose. And if you go for the shot and miss it, you could lose. So, therefore, it's it's really a tough decision for Reyes right now. He, I, he, he did the shot and push him to this yeah, position. That was a good push out then. I don't know if you're going to shoot this shot. I think I'd let him shoot it. See, he's looking whether he can cross the ball. He'd like to bank the one ball straight down the table and put him behind the four ball, but it, the, the angle's just not there. You'd have to hit it too perfect to do that. And then he may even scratch. Yeah, that's what I mean. You'd have to hit it too perfect. But I don't know about going for this shot. It's a tough shot. It's a bad percentage, I think. Oh, he hit yeah, it very uh -huh. thinly. And then that way he knew that if he missed it, chances are the Ray Reyes would then walk from the table without really leaving any yeah. type of an offensive shot. And uh, he hits balls very, very... Yeah, actually, good. that was a great shot. Yeah. That was a great shot. That's one I've overlooked right there. And I usually don't overlook anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, he may uh, find himself behind the four here. He's going to lay this in the pocket that's going to hang up. And, well, uh, he can kick this. Yeah, yeah he kicks so well, too. And, uh, but he can't afford to kick this hard because if he kicks it hard, it happens to hit the uh, the side rail. There's the six that may be an interfering ball, the seven, and also the eight that could be possible nine. interfering balls. He can kiss off the nine, go back behind, and, and, and kiss off the six, go back behind the nine or the three. 
He's going to hit this hard anyway, I think. I would not hit this hard. Told you, you want to make sure he made it. Look at this kiss. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. The magician. <laughs> like I said, I would hit that hard because there's a lot of good things that can happen. <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't hit that soft because then you're left with a tough two ball, a tough position on the three ball. He did it the right way. <laughs> Can you just play for luck? Game 15. Hit it Eight, and see what seven, happens. Reyes. But you notice he didn't hit, this, hit the one ball solid. He hit the cushion first to cause all that. Yeah. Well, that's what he tried to do. I would yeah, sure. Yeah, and he just wanted to create some action there. I told you this was going to start the, going his way now. Well, if that's an indication of how it's going to continue, certainly is going his way because he threw caution to the wind when he shot that shot. Well, that was the only thing to do on the shot, though. But look, he got another roll. He just tied him up again. Earl's getting a little fed up with it, he says to himself. How can this happen to me? Oh, boy. <laughs> so, therefore, it was a lot of traffic that he had, to, he had to go through by kicking in this fashion. But... See, See, Two balls to the left of the cue ball. See, if he hit this soft, he's going to wind up behind the six ball. Or, yeah, if I mean, if he if he hit this soft, he could have wound up behind the six or have a long shot on the two ball, and, and still no good for position on the three. So hit it hard, let it go, see what happens, and this is what happened. <laughs> had that not happened, he would have, he would have had a shot anyway, wouldn't he? We don't we don't we don't know, do we? Yeah, we know. I mean, uh, but oh yeah, yeah. Um, oh you mean on the next ball? Yeah, right. Well, here. This is the, a big shot. Where yeah, he's got a one-game lead. He's yeah, got a I long look, straight in. I look from the, the pocket this ball. He's uh, he's off the cushion, even though the uh, seven ball may snooker a portion, portion of the uh, of the cue ball. I, I look from the pocket this ball. He, he's got a good look at it right here. Just focus, 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 and make sure your stroke, stroke goes out straight on the shot. Pop. Right in the heart, he hit it. Got a little bit of an angle on the two ball, but that's okay because you kind of like want to cinch that one ball. You want to make sure you make that one. And it's okay because of the position of the four. You really don't have to do right. much off the three for position on the four since the four is located very near the right-hand corner pocket. Excuse me, right-hand side pocket. So therefore, he's, he figures to go two cushions around the eight. And straight out, yeah. Or, or he, maybe he, he might spin this. Draw it. Yeah, he might just spin this a little bit. Pinch it. Okay. No, one cushion he went. Drawing it away from the eight. Back and see the way he's coming the into the angle of the shot. Very nicely done. Which is a better way of playing it, actually, yeah. because he stays on the line. I thought he had a bigger angle. It's tough to see from this angle. And he's on the proper side of the three also, which will bring him closer to the four. Yeah. Got to make sure you get a good angle on the five ball here because you want to drop to the cushion down from the side pocket. Yeah, this this is the uh, the key shot position on the five. The five to the six will tell the story, or at least should. A little left-hand English there to make sure you get closer to the five ball. Now he's going to draw. Some players would go to the cushion on the on the left side of the table here or uh, or just use speed. Here's one of the shots where you're coming across the angle. If you go into the cushion, you're coming into the angle after you make contact with the cushion. He's so, coming across the angle. He just judged his speed on that shot. See, but if he went to the cushion, Billy, mm -hmm. and then bounced out, he's coming into the angle the whole time. When he plays position on his eight ball, he's going to play for an angle to go three cushions for the nine ball. He'll stay to the left of the eight. There, yes. Which like he's that. done. And he'll, he'll try to draw as deeply into the right-hand corner as he can, which will give him the angle that he needs to come out of. Right. So no matter where he hits the cushion, off the cushion, the speed, yeah. he's just going to come in into the shot. See how deep he came out of the right-hand cushion? Yeah. Now, no matter where it stops here, he'll get boom, come and come and come and come. you got a big area to stop. And all of a sudden, uh, we have a player that has a two-game advantage in the match, and that player is Efren Reyes, leading by the score of nine games to seven. Well, how's my prediction? He's won three in a row since I said that. Well, that's right. I knew it was time for one of these players. There's two great players. I mean, one of them's got to take control, and it was the middle of the match. One of them just had to do it. If he makes a ball here, I mean, he's going to get his rhythm going in the... It's just going to be a fast match from here on out. Mm -hmm. 
There, he's finally changed location, Billy. Finally. Deciding to position the cue ball on the other side of the table, figuring that maybe I'll get better action from this side. And he's made the corner ball. It didn't go straight in, though. Watch the, the cue ball. Watch the cue ball. Up. Two nine right away. You can see that's available. Well, it's tough, though. Tough combination. You have to get perfect on it. Uh, there's no hole for the two ball. Yes, there is. You go in the middle of the table. I think the two passes the nine. No, it doesn't. Well, the two eight is straight on the side, but if you're going to play for a combination, you want to just play for the two nine. Well, you know, not necessarily. You always play for the easiest combination. But it's, uh, this is a funny little shot. He's going to play for the combination. He really doesn't want to shoot this shot. So he's going to, he's going to position the cue balls in, in, in an area that suggests he's going to draw it around the four. You know, I'm not quite sure if, if, I, if I would position the cue ball to the left of the one and draw it to the side cushion and toward the two that way. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. He could. He's okay, he's going just across the table. And keep it. He's going he's gonna to settle for a longer shot on the uh, two nine, longer combination. Yeah, he's going to hit this hard and try to send the cue ball two cushions around the table up upstairs there, up table, in case he misses the shot. And then the cue ball should be somewhere yeah, in the stop area the behind the eight. Right. Yeah. See it? So a little bit of a fortuitous roll in the regard that Efren scratched on the break by a, by a kissing ball into the side pocket. Strickland taking advantage of it. Trails by only one game now in the match, eight games to nine. Now, uh, He's going to change Ray too, watch is, this. Yeah, Ray has changed position, uh, breaking the balls. Maybe Earl will. Uh, He's thinking about where he wants to go to the middle of the table. I bet he breaks with his hand on the table this time. He's going back. Uh, no, he, no, 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 he doesn't uh, know what he wants to do. <laughs> Why is that? He's trying to outguess the uh, forward, the, the gentleman racking the balls. Hmm, uh -huh. I'll look at the rack first. If I tilt it a certain way, maybe that's where, where I'll go, okay? Whatever way uh, it favors. Well, he breaks good with his hand on the maybe table, he too. He breaks good with his hand on the table rather than the cushion, so I think he's going to go to the middle of the table. Okay, he's going to the side of the table that no. Ray has broke the balls from the preceding rack on the cushion. Let's see the type of action he gets from this. Two ball in the corner. And the shot on the one. Oh, the three boy. to the left of the one. And this is a... Four fair. open, five is open for the left yeah, Everything corner. is open. Six is available underneath the nine. Not much traveling after pocketing the five. Seven at the other end of the table. Eight in front of the corner pocket. This is a... Oh, my. This is a... Fairly much another Cosmo. Well, he's not connecting the dots here because, well... Does he have an angle here? Yeah, he had an angle. No, it's Cosmo. Just get above the five ball so you have the angle to come down for the six. That's your only problem here. Yeah, that way you have an option. Naturally, you'd rather play position for this side of the six, the right he, side. He didn't get above it. He got straight in. He's going to have to draw back and shoot a tough cut on the six ball, and that makes a little bit of a problem because he might run into the nine. He has to go between the nine and the seven on the way up table. See, he's got a tough... Or he could follow the mm. ball and shoot the six over this corner. Right. If he's straight in, he could follow it and go into the eight. He's following it back and forth, I think. You don't want to get on the cushion here. This is a little bit of a tricky shot here, too, because he may go into the just, nine here. He might rush sure, the nine. He's going to hit a little left hand English, go straight up. Well, he was able to avoid yeah. contacting the nine. And now it's just one cushion back straight up and down the table. Now oh, he's drawing it. He's straighter in than I thought. Well, it's tied up again. And once again, uh, it is tied up. Now the score being nine games for Strickland, nine games for Reyes. And now we have a four out of seven tournament. I like the breaker from here, but I'm still going to pick Efren to win. So therefore, you can't lose. I can't lose. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you, I, I'm just saying you have to I like, like the, the breaker, breaker to win, but I'm going to still pick up from the No, I said I like the breaker. Usually I'm here, but I'm still going to pick up from the win. Four to, four to seven with, with the guy breaking. I'd rather take the guy breaking, but I'm still going to stick with what my original prediction was. <laughs> well, you can't abandon it just because it's abandon. tied up. Well, well, you got to wait a couple of I've seen games. you switch your bets in the middle of the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because of it. it may have been a valid reason. Right now, you yeah, don't have a You thought you were going to lose. <laughs> well, you've moved back to the other side of the table, though. Two ball. Ooh. Watch out. 
Ooh. Look at how big this game is. Look at this. Look at this. Ooh. Two ball hit the point of the side pocket, came back cross table only to stop in between the one and the cue ball. Mm, where do you push here? Well, it looks like he might have to push for a kick. He's definitely going to push for a kick. He may push for a kick to pocket the one, if that's available. And at the same time... That's what he's looking at, how far down the table. He's looking to push the cue ball about a foot or something like that so he can get to the cushion. I don't think he can do that without exposing the one ball. Tell you what he can do. He can he can he can bank the five cross table stopping the cue Stop ball right cue where ball. it is. That's a good shot. Now he can kick. He, he, but the, he safe, kick the, one. the safety's too easy though. If you did that, I mean, you're just going to bank the one down. You're tied up behind the two six no, seven. Not allowing him to see the one. Oh yeah, that's yeah, good. Not allowing him to see the one. Mm -hmm. You know, you bank the five. He's out kicking of there, at it right now. Back. He's kicking at it right now. Three cushions. No, two cushions. That was a pretty good shot there. It turned out to be a good shot, but it didn't have to. It didn't have to happen that way, but it was, it was it a pretty good shot as long as you hit the ball on that side. You know it's going that way. I liked your shot, though, better and bank the five cross side. and uh, Cross corner or whatever it was, drawing the ball back a little bit, uh, not allowing uh, Strickland to see any push. Put the cue ball behind the eight here, just following down. Well, he's left this, I mean, where he's going to kick this ball. He's he going to kick this two cushions and try to stop the cue ball right yeah, there. Yeah, he would like to. If he, if there's room, maybe the angle's not available there. If the eight blocks off the portion of the rail that he needs to hit, he's going to have to come over top of the one. He's all right. Oh, he's hit the side of the ball. Huh. He tried to hit that thinner and get him behind the nine ball. Mm, yeah. See, he, he couldn't hit deeply enough in the rail to get under the, under the one for the two cushion kick. Now he has a combination, and it looks like he has to cut the one back so back a little bit, losing control of the cue ball. After yeah, you, can, you, you can try to draw him underneath the four ball, but it looks like the combination, you might make the combination. What's he doing here? Oh, he had He's a, cinching the combination. See, he had the wrong angle on yeah. the combination to play position for the one. So he cinched the combination, and now he's got maybe a little better situation to work with. He's drawing him underneath the four ball. No, he's not. Yes, he is. You know, he let him out. He certainly did. He let him out. Sometimes it's asking a little bit too much to uh, position the cue ball behind one single solitary ball. No. Maybe you're better off just playing speed of the object ball and uh, leaving him a difficult shot to negotiate rather than trying to hook him. But I'm not, I don't find fault in what he did. No, I like that shot. Wrong. He shot. He just hit a little bad. This is a tough shot here. He's missed a lot of balls. No, he may get lucky if he brushes the two, nope. which he didn't. Well, the, the five ball will, will definitely hamper his bridge hand somewhat and also diminish the accuracy of this shot. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, if this shot isn't any means a gimme, he's going to have to be he's here, here's have to pocket a, here, here's the one and control the cue ball. Here's an interesting shot. He's going to draw it back into the five ball. No matter where you come over in the side, you're going to get a shot. See it? He just didn't come hard enough. I'd have hit that harder because you couldn't go wrong in that shot, Billy. Even if you hit the five, you're still going to bounce out. You can draw it and, you know, cross the table, come down for the four ball. I'd have hit that a lot harder. Well, I can see definitely the equity in your choice, considering, especially now since he's fallen short of the mark. Right, and you didn't want to be out in the middle of the table. You would never fall short of the mark with your shot. Another miss. Well, that's a tough shot anyway, but it's another missed ball. Okay, can he see the... Yes, he can see the, uh, the two ball. Well, what's he going to do with it? Well, he, he, could just, he could just knock it toward, toward the five or on that cushion. Yeah, because you don't leave the angle for position. Yeah, but the horse located uh, on this end of the table. He and hits this shot good. He's going to just bank this to the corner pocket and try to tie him up behind the six and seven. No, he's... He this. tried to cross it, and he got, he got a little bit of a roll in trying to cross it. The cue ball is actually getting a kiss off of the two and sending the two to the left-hand cushion, leaving Strickland a very difficult shot, offensive shot, that is, if he left him any... So therefore, in that regard, he, get, he really got quite fortunate. Yeah, actually, the rolls have been in his favor this whole match. Not a lot, but uh, you know, more than Earl has gotten. Well, he's just gonna. Uh, what can he do here? Just send a two down table? I mean, what the heck can you do here? Uh, he's gonna have to go for the pocket here. You think he's gonna cut this ball? And go yeah, back he's gonna have to go for the pocket here. Come underneath. He's gonna have to hit it with some point. speed to go for the pocket. He really spun that. That's a tough shot anytime you use an inside English like that. There, there really wasn't any safety at all. 
So therefore, he was forced to go for the pocket. And uh, had he pocketed the two ball, then he would have been a good line for the four. Yeah, I think if you'd hit that ball hard and try to go back and forth across the table, it would have been an easier shot and, and more chance for, for uh, uh, safety. All right, so he would have moved some balls. Yeah. Well, here it's uh, just come back for the five in the corner. He may be a little thin on the floor here. Yeah, he'll spin this. He likes this. This is the old wimpy type shot. Bing. Watch it spin this. See it? Bing. <laughs> Bing. <laughs> is that the sound of the Yeah, I always pictured it as that anyway. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a bing shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the old fizz. Six goes to the side, so it's a fairly easy. He'll shoot the seven in the corner next and leave an angle to go straight across the table for the eight. Well, I think he'll play a position for the side, huh? Because then he's natural for the coming no, I think the he's eight. just going to come back. See? Oh, you're right. He came oh, way back, though. Badly but, hit. Uh, yeah. Badly hit ball. No, he's just going to spin this badly one. Badly hit ball. Yep, he'll spin this in, though. These are his kind of favorite shots, too, though. Yeah, but... Uh, I don't like this shot. I'd rather cut it back in the other corner. This ball could turn over on you. He's made it, but I don't like shooting in that corner. Yeah. And a little awkward. He's going to have to stop the ball. Well, he might fall down for the nine in the other corner or pound it. Looks like mm -hmm. he's going to pound it a little bit. Yeah. Not too hard, though. Yep. And game 19 goes to Reyes, who now takes the lead in the match by one game, ten games to nine. So both players have had their chances at the table. And it's been a very close match the entire way through. The break really hasn't been that valuable for either player, considering that no one has really strung right. you know, you know, multiple racks. Tell you the truth, I don't think any of them have, have run two racks back to back. In the beginning, yeah, Efren did the first shot out. Right, he took it to early yeah, 2 and, and, and that was the end of the two rack runs. But Strickland won the lag, so therefore Efren didn't win the two games off of his break. That, that's true, too. Now he's trying to figure out where he's going to break from. He broke from the other side of the table the last time, and and I thought that he did well because he did make the corner yeah. ball. But he got kissed in. Well, at least there was action. Yeah. Well, he's back over here. Let's see what happens. One ball on the side. Oh. Oh, he can... He can oh God, go these real two balls first are coming. Two balls are coming. They're separating, and he can see the two. <laughs> <laughs> he can see the two, and he can pocket the two. But notice the position of the four and the five, and the position of the three mm -hmm. near the side pocket. It's going to be difficult. Well, no, all he has to do is get on the three ball here, Bill. You see that the four passes, and he's got to carry him on the five nine. But it looks like he has to go real first, doesn't he's he? He's going to spin this back for three, play the three in. in oh no, he, I, I didn't think he could see the ball. I thought he had to go real first. No, no. And now it's just the four, and he's going to play the carom on the five. The five nine billiards available, and he's do now is pocket the three play position for the four drop nicely near the side cushion for the five nine billiard. He's when he shoots the, uh, the five nine billiards, you have to use uh, left hand English. Make sure you get it because it looks like the five is out a little far. Ooh. If it is out a little far, he don't like where he's got there. If it is out a little far, he certainly don't like the no, results. No, now he's got to use inside English to throw the nine into the pocket. You see the inside English? That's left hand English there. He got a little careless there. Yes, he did. Uh, I mean, if it came over just another quarter of an inch, he couldn't have made that ball. No. And once again, Reyes extends his lead of the match by two games. Now the score: eleven for Reyes. Nine for Strickland. Big game coming up here, huh? Puts Rays in the one hole, as we call it. And, uh, On the hilltop. He's going to go back to the same side. I don't blame him. Yeah, he almost made it to the nine of the break. Yeah. He has been getting, getting better action on the nine. Breaking from this side of the table. No, he's not really worried about that. He's looking to just make a ball and get 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 shape on the one. The nine's going. The nine. Oop! Got kissed. The one ball. I don't know if he's got the bank here or not. No, he doesn't have any bank at all. Oh, 
Look at the eight ball, Billy. Eight's laying in a tough spot. I look. Uh, I don't look for him to shoot from this position. I look. I, I myself would push a little. He's looking at the nine ball right here. Watch this. He's yeah, looking at the nine ball. The cue ball's going to go in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at this. He got between them and he hit yeah, well, perfect. He, he, yeah, he hit perfect. He, yeah. played, he played that shot. Yeah, he, I, I yes, saw that shot. I thought that perhaps I would give myself a little bit better yeah. angle on it. Touchy little shot. Somewhere. He could have kissed off the nine. He could have went right in the hole. Mm, I mean, yeah. there's a lot could have happened there. He hit that shot absolutely perfect. All the Filipinos play the cushions very well. Oh, shot right into the ball. The wheels oh. are coming. Oh, well, every oh, the eight from the cushion. Well, the eight. Maybe the eight will end up in a better spot for him. You know, it did, Not I likely. Think. It did wind up in a, in a tricky situation with the eight. There's no The combination looks really tough. And uh, neither the six or the seven are near the eight to break it free from the nine, so therefore he's going to have to probably, probably play position for the combination. See, see the way he played this shot now? Instead of playing for the straight end and bouncing off the cushion and coming across the angle, he played to go two cushions. In other words, hit the top cushion, come off the side cushion, and straight into the angle of the four ball. Mm -hmm. But he may have gotten a little bit too far to he the did. right. Now, now he might go three cushions and come over and play the, the, the four ball in the opposite pocket. That's what he's doing. Didn't hit it hard enough. But he's still okay. It's just make the ball come. You're going to come two cushions naturally and... That position on the five, but you don't want to shoot tough shots. You like to be in line all the time. But he's got to do it. Yeah, he would have been ideal if he would have gone down the table maybe another six or seven inches. Yeah. But still, if he's able to pocket the four, then he'll get himself back in line for the five. No, it's natural. You're just going to hit this with a shade of outside English, a little left-hand English. And see, it's a natural shot. I don't know if he can just draw it straight back with the six in the corner. He's looking to see what he can do with that eight ball. I don't think he can do very much with the eight ball. So, therefore, he's going to have to worry about getting position for the six. He's going to either have to follow it and bump the six to the side cushion and back out or draw straight back if he has that angle. Yeah. For the side pocket. Mm. Well, it's tough with, to tell from Hitting here, with but. that soft speed yeah. enabled him to miss yeah. the six. Had he hit it with a harder speed, then he would have you know, he got some deflection there off of the five, and he would have made contact with the six. That's right. They call that sometimes weight of the ball. Takes it through it rather than jumping off the object ball. Here, he, you know what he's going to do here, Billy? I, think, I don't think he's going to play for the combination. Well, I, don't, I can't really tell the angle, but if he doesn't play for the combination, he's going to come down here, kiss off the eight, off the cushion, into the nine. Well, I think he's going to play for the combination. Yep, the combination. He's trying to get straight on the shot. That's why he's looking at the table. It looks like he got pretty good on the shot. I mean, these shots are missable. I think he's going to take a little bit more time than he took on that on the other 6-9 <laughs> combination he missed. A lot more time. Yeah, and Efren Reyes is the first player to find himself on the hill, leading Earl Strickland in a race of 13, 12 games to nine. Strickland now lead, needs to string four consecutive wrecks or get them in some way. But neither player up to this point in the match has won four consecutive games. Did Efren just run two racks there? I think he did, didn't he? Well, it was tied up. Yeah, he broke the piece. Yeah, he ran the two racks, broke and ran out, I mean. Excuse me. Well, you're going to have to explain why you said excuse me now because our viewers can't hear Pat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody just told me that the uh, girl had broke the balls uh, the one time, and I think he was right. So it hasn't been two, two racks in a row for uh, effort. Look at the scratch. Oh, nope. my. Oh. oh. Well, Earl is going to have another opportunity at the table. With the two ball finally coming to rest against the four, not allowing Earl to pocket the two in the lower left-hand corner, the position of the one in the cue ball straight in. I don't know. Uh, it's not much you really, can do not here. Not much you can do with it, considering the angle that he has on the one. And by the time they get down to the five ball, the five is laid in a real tricky situation. Well, he can draw it down here and try to play the carom. See the carom, play the carom off the two. No, you can't. The two's above the four. <coughs> he 
might, if he can pass this, he might draw it straight up and down, try to break him out on the way back. Yeah, that's an option. What What is he going to do from this position? I don't, I, don't know know, I, I don't know if he has anything from here. I mean, the way that ball came back, it looked like he, he could have drew it straight into the two and four. <laughs> I mean, it was headed that way, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, he wanted to get down deeper so he could maybe get in back of the 6-8 with the cue ball. Yeah, it looks to me like he's going to draw off the two ball and put the cue ball up table behind the 6 and the 8. Just leave, try to leave the two where it is if he has the Yeah, angle. hitting the, uh, the cushion before the side, going across the table? Yeah. I'm, I don't know if he's got the right angle. <coughs> he's really got some bad rolls. He really has. This was the shot. Well, Earl would jump over this, and I know Efren's not. Earl, Efren's going to kick at this ball. Earl would be going to the sky. <laughs> he made a heck of a shot on Luat when it was 10-10. He jumped over the ball and made a 5-9 combination. It was just incredible. Now, watch this. He lined this shot up to where he wants to give the 9 some action. Well, you're coming off the edge of the ball. Yeah, See the edge of the ball? He's got a chance to make the 9 He ball. wants to give the 9 some action. So after... Uh, Hitting the two, look for the cue ball to go somewhere in the area where the nine is. Into the nine. Oh, my See it? it was a close roll. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great shot, huh? Yeah. So that just once again defines and describes exactly how well he does kick balls. Oh, he's got a tough out here in four games. He's got to come uh, with the shot, get position on the next ball. He just got there too. The five's really laying tough though. He's going to come straight across the table and play the left, uh, play the four in the left-hand corner pocket up there, I think, and try to draw back for the five in the right-hand corner pocket. I think that's what he's going to try to do. It looks to me that's the way I'd go. You see what Billings just straight yeah. across the table. If he plays position for the side pocket, the six and the eight are interfering balls. That'd be foolish to do that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, just straight. softly cut it in. He wants to get straight in on this ball. Right. Well, no, he, he can draw and bust the five out of there though. He can hit the five ball with the shot. Is there room to play in front of the five playing position for the lower right? I don't think so. He's going to draw it into the five. Well, there is room. He's got to get perfectly straight. Now he needs to force the ball a little bit. Or oh, he's drawing back. Yeah, for the six on the side. Tell you what, he has negotiated this wreck. Quite nicely. Straight up and down for the eight and the side. Try to get straight. And he's perfect. Yeah, there was a lot of work in that rack, and uh, he showed a lot of uh, a lot of fortitude yeah. in, yes, in working did. his way through it. A lot of pressure situations he was confronted with and did well. At the end of game 22, Earl Strickland trails by two games in the match, 12 games to 10 in a race to 13. He's hanging by a thread, uh, one mistake hereafter, and uh, he should be history. He knows it, but uh, can he do anything about it? Well, you know, really, this is anybody's game right now. Anybody's match, I mean. Well, I wouldn't go as I, far I mean, to say that. I know that uh, Reyes definitely is a... Is a prohibitive favorite at this point. It's not anyone's match, but if uh, Earl gets the opportunities... Yeah, that's know, what I meant. At least in this game, he really needs to break the balls, come up with a ball and a break and a shot. Without that, uh, he's in trouble. I don't see anything going. Nothing has gone. And no shot, though. But no shot. Very quickly, I'll uh, uh, describe the layout to you. There are five balls that are nestled together, grouply tight in the, near the left-hand corner, lower corner pocket. The seven and the four are, are right in the pocket. The three to the left of the four, the five is in between the four and the nine. He's pushed to the side rail, giving the early opportunity to go for a bank or a safety here. It's tough to get, out, get the safety because uh, the six is going to run interference with the cue ball off the cushion that way. Well, he's forcing Earl to shoot the shot because Earl can't afford to pass the shot. Mm. He did well with it. No, he, I mean, he can, this looks like an easy jump here. He's only over the edge of the ball, Billy. Mm. 
But you don't see Efren jump too many balls. Very no, solid. you don't. Particularly when the uh, the ball that he has to get over is that close to the cue ball. He doesn't want to pass this. I mean, we well, can't pass it, but <laughs> <laughs> right, a necessitating situation. Right. right. He's going to mass a it. He's going to play a safe, leaving a bank for Strickland. Oh, he could make. Oh my, he almost had room to make it. Yeah, I mean, he didn't. Uh, he hit that pretty hard for a little bit of a mass a. Didn't yeah, he? That, that which was an indication that he had room to make it. Yeah. That's a very interesting uh, situation he's confronted with here. In, reg in regard to that cluster down there. Well, we can't see if the three passes here. If, he, if it doesn't pass, that means it's going hit, to hit, hit the seven, then you don't know which way the seven's going to sh shoot the four out of there. And you really can't play a three, four, seven billiard. Then well, that's what he's looking at right you now. Go beneath, you might go under the five. Well, he could, uh, he could... No, that's no good either. I mean, you could play for the carom off the three, hit the four, seven billiard in, bring the four back out. I mean, you know, the three back out a little bit. I don't know if that lays right or not. Well, he's not playing. He's playing for, for a three ball combination here. Maybe he's playing for the th the pocket to three. Yeah, you see that the three is going to come over here and click these two balls here. It's going to stay down table, I think. The four is going to get out of the way. You got to watch the kiss. Mm. No, he's not going to like this. There were so many things that could happen there. He can't hit this soft and put him behind a five, I don't think. Well, he, he might be able to put him behind the nine off of the, off of the billiard, off the five. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. Well, if he clicked, well, he's still got... Well, that'll work. Yeah, that'll get it. I mean, he can't kick to this cushion and, make, and hit, the three, the, hit the edge of the three. He's going to go, it looks like he might go up and down the table. And I think that's the only option he has is to kick along. And if you notice the position of the four, let's get a let's get a close up of the of the four ball in relation to the side pocket. He's kicking to make this ball right now. Okay, if he kicks the three in, he'll follow down. He will have a shot on the four. Well, he gave himself a. A better chance of walking by away in a better cushion, situation, yeah. yeah, by going into the second question. Now he had the chance of uh, separating both the cue ball from the three, and also he had the uh, chance of pocketing the three. Gonna hit. He's gonna bring the five over to the side cushion with this shot too, and get position. See it. Well, this is getting very interesting now. Just drawing the cue ball back for the six. We're punching it back out. Same thing here. He either wants to get straight in on the eight or with the left-hand angle. There it is. Yeah, this plays natural cross table. Yep. And it looks like we're going to have a very interesting finish here. It's developing into that. And uh, after game 23, Ray is still on the hill with 12. Stricken coming, coming strong. He's got 11. In the meantime, we have to change the tape. We'll be right back. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay, once again, we are back in time. Of course, we, we wouldn't have allowed the action to start without you people being able to watch it. Score Strickland 11, Reyes 12, and a race to 13. Look out, 9. Ooh. Oh, 9, 7. He's going to get the 7. The one's going to go in front of the corner pocket, and now oh. it's anyone's match. Well, This I'm match is a toss-up from, from this position. Yeah. Reyes has the equity of being on the hill. Strickland has the equity of being at the table. And after that shot, he increases the value of the control of the table somewhat. I tell you, Earl's won a lot of matches in these predicaments, hasn't he? I mean, this whole tournament, especially. Uh, 
Look Watch out. out. He's Look behind down. the nine. He's behind the nine. What? what he's he behind. The there, he's he? very close. It's he's going to very a bit close. Man, he took a heck of a chance there. It's very close. Very close. He may have he, to. He may have to jump this somewhat. No, little, he's not a too concerned. Bit. He's not too concerned. Wait, it's very close. Well, he's falling short of the mark. I'm just gonna cut this in a second. Go two cushions. Gotten straight on the floor, but uh, he's already right. gonna make the ball. Happen. It goes naturally two cushions, and then two two cushions with the five to the six. Well, he's falling short once again. Yep. He'll hit the soft. <laughs> he has to hit the shot soft because there's no other route. This ball could turn on him, though. It certainly can. But it didn't. At the uh, equity uh, mm -hmm. of the control of the table seems to be getting larger. I guess so. you got to like the shooter right now to win this match. Ooh, what a ball game. Yeah, you definitely felt the heartbeat of this match increasing, you know, when, uh, <laughs> when Reyes missed that one in the corner after Strickland played that safety, and then all of a sudden you knew it was anybody's match. I said in the beginning, remember about halfway through, I said it was the makings of a 12-12 match, and that's exactly what it is. This is kind of the matches we look forward to. Well, I guess they're going to play one game for the title and the cheese. I think you're like me, Billy. I like to see a match like this when it comes 12-12. When they break the ball, I like to see a little cluster here, a little cluster oh, there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So there's some play we, to it. Sure. Every, everyone wants to see a thrilling finish. Everyone yeah. wants to see both players at the table in a hill-hill match to negotiate uh, the layout somewhere. Right, and some safety play sure. a whole bit. So, well... Maybe Ford gave him a slug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, here you, we go. Here's one thing you don't want. You don't want to scratch. You don't want to make the cue ball jump off the table. Make sure you make contact with the one solid. You don't want right. to... Ooh, he, the one's going to go to the center of the table, possibly. We got a few clusters. Not much, but I mean, it's something. Well, the seven and an eight at the other end of the table. The eight precludes yeah, the seven the pocket, that's what I'm pocket in, the, in the upper left. And he's starting off with a, a fairly thin hit on the one. To the position of the three at the other end of the table. I don't know if the angle that he has on the one suggests that it's natural position. Maybe he has to uh, he's spin going it some No, he's drawing it underneath the seven and eight here. He's drawing it underneath here. He got around and gave him no, a shot. No, he gave him a shot. Now, Ray is... the nine ball here, Billy. No, I don't no, think the angle No up. nine here. No nine here. He's going for it. If it was up another inch, he could have drew it into the nine because the three was there yeah. in position anyway, but right, it's exactly. not the way it turned out. But there's no nine here. Here's, this is a tough shot. you got to kind of like a slow roll this. Not real slow roll. You're going to go into the nine, or you don't have to go into the nine, but you're not going to hit this ball hard, and like, naturally you want to hit the ball hard. I like his chances here. Well, you got to like the shooter's chances, but believe me, this ain't no easy shot right now. I'm He's got a funny bridge off the cushion where it's laying. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you're hitting down on the cue ball off a rail like that, the ball can swerve if you hit it a little bit bad. He's going to hit it so where the cue ball will then go maybe into the nine or possibly... A quarter of the way back up table. Yeah, but look at what happens. Oh, well, you that see? was the problem. He, He's didn't, not, he didn't have the feel at that moment to, to go ahead and slow roll it, so he opted to go ahead and cinch it. That's what you're supposed to do, though. By cinching it, he you now has another table. problem to deal with later on, but I guess it's a, it's a fair trade-off considering you want to stay in control of the table. And we're getting what we wanted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's he's so. not going to shoot this ball. Unless he can make the four ball, he's not going to shoot. The, he's just going to draw. And he's gonna, oh, he's shooting this ball. Here's one of them spin shots again, the bing shots. The bing. Ooh. Does he hit these shots good? Perfectly hit. That's like Wimpy used to play. Remember Wimpy? Luther okay. Lasser. Do I remember said, Wimpy? Who yeah. could forget Wimpy? Well, if the people haven't seen him play before, I mean, that's the way Luther used to play all the time, spinning the ball and pinching. Okay, does he have the angle to draw off of the nine? Yes, he does. The, yes, clearing he does. the way for the five? The nine's just going to come out of there. Maybe he'll go into the six or not. doesn't matter. All he has to do is just draw this ball, and it's going to bump off the six. Just make sure you don't draw too strong. Just nip the top side of the nine. You want to make sure you go into the nine here. Just draw it straight back just a little bit. Just a little bit, I said. What? He didn't have to do that. You see what I'm talking about? That's right. Now, uh, why did he do that? Because he wanted to make it even more thrilling. 
No, but if he just pinched that ball a little bit, it would have stopped right there. Just the nine would have came over the same way, and he would have been right well, there. Well, he figured the nine it. was going to go into the six, and he was going to move the six. Well, he might have figured that, yeah. He must have figured that, otherwise why would he shoot it like sure. that? Sure, see, now he even pointed like he was supposed to move the six. With his finger, he could have moved it, but the nine, he didn't. Well, he's got, he's got, he can see pretty much a full ball at his five ball, so, he, I mean, he's going to set it up table, and this, this whole game depends if he can get it behind the six ball. Yeah, there's a possibility he may even be able to bank this five up table. You know? Maybe. That yeah, shot's available, maybe. and then he can use the six as an interfering ball. Yeah. If he pockets the oh, bank, yeah. if he pockets the bank, he'll have the six to shoot. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh... Watch the eight. Watch the eight. Oh, my goodness. Strickland said, oh, okay, you can have goodness. that ball. Oh, boy. Now, the position Strickland should have been in, Reyes is in that position. And, but he's in a worse position, Billy. He can't even go to the left-hand cushion because there's no access to the five well, on the this seven, side. The seven is an interfering ball. Yeah, he goes to the meant. left. He precludes him from kicking in that fashion. He can't go to the right because there's no cushion there. He's in big trouble. He's in big trouble here. The short cushion is the only cushion he, has, he can go to. Oh, oh what a bad oh, roll, my. huh? Oh, Apers. horrible roll. Horrible roll. Horrible. He's gonna. He, he might be able to go back and forth here. That's what he's looking at. I don't like that because you're going to leave a shot. Yeah, you're not going to get movement from the five ball here right. if you're able to contact it. And it looks like the, the short cushion is the only cushion he can go to. <laughs> Behind the six. You, you know, he kicks balls. You know, he could nip the five. In other words, going to the left-hand cushion, just missing the seven ball, nipping the five, and coming three cushions back down table. I think he, he's going twice. I don't twice like this twice. shot because you're gonna, you, you don't get no movement, like you said. You, and you might miss this ball. Oh, 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 what a shot! Oh, my. Look at the little Strickland. Put the camera on Earl. Yeah, Earl's even clapping on that shot. Put the camera on Earl Strickland. I don't believe it. Sport fans, you have seen I mean, everything now. What a wow. shot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. that They're going to play this in Manila. You're going to sell this tape to Manila. I know that. Jeepers. Well, that's why they call him a magician. There you have it. But he's not out yet, though. I've seen funny things happen. And he's following a little short yeah, of the mark. Now, short. He, now he has to go two oh, cushions. Gee. Or draw it one cushion. I think, I don't know. He's got a, he's got a funny angle. He's, yeah. got, he's got to force it and make sure he doesn't force it into the corner pocket. He's got a funny him. angle. Oh, the suspense is still there. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this is the rack that we wanted to see. We got everything we wanted. And he's more. He's drawing one cushion. And more. Right selection here, I think this is perfect. He's That's there. it. He's home. He's home. What a finish. What a final, What huh? a finish. You couldn't get no better oh, than that. No wonder you asked me to do oh, this. What a finish. Uh, and, and I really had to commend Earl for his sportsmanship there. I mean, and yeah. he really was happy for, for Reyes in the regard that he made a ter terrific shot to steal the match away from him. Just incredible. What a performance. Well, I've never seen anything like that. Uh, I've played this game 30 years. I've never seen a kick like that. <laughs> he kicked that seven ball in, or I mean, whatever ball that was. You, you, the five ball. The five ball. Everyone, everyone in attendance thought, especially if they were knowledgeable, thought that he was dead in the water. And, and like you no said, chance. and like you said, going to cushions on that shot, he wasn't going to get no movement on the five, and he didn't. He had it just enough to, for the five to get to the hole. <laughs> Unbelievable! Oh, goodness! Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful finals! Oh, this is going to be a great finals for people to buy. Hope you enjoy this. Anyway, it was a bit of a pleasure <laughs> well, doing this with you, Billy. I'm glad you got me on this one. This is a capper here. It certainly has been a pleasure, and uh, we've been trying to get you up here in the booth for seven years now, and fortunately. You know, we were able to get you for this match, and what a thrilling, thrilling match it was. And I don't know if we're going to be doing an interview, but uh, Efren, Efren is, is entitled we to, this, get to this moment here. right now. Yeah, see if you can get Efren up here. Okay. Chris. Chris. Well, what, what, Rick Bowling. Tell Efren to come over here. Efren. 
We're going to get effort for you. Oh, is that wonderful? I mean, I mean, I mean. He's shaking oh. hands with everybody over there. I mean, this has been a great final. So. Uh, yeah, that, that would be great. That would be great. I, I'm sure that. Howard, you got the what a what a wonderful shot that we have there on the on the freeze frame. I mean that's just wonderful on the freeze frame. Yeah, that's sportsmanship there. Oh, that's that's, that's a great shot there. That was the greatest shot in the whole Oh, he was dead in the water here. He only had two <laughs> options. One which Jimmy and I both disagreed with, but obviously we were wrong, especially when you watch the outcome of this shot. This is Hill Hill in a race Don't to get 13. no better than this. Look it at this. He doesn't. hits it perfect. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. And what a time <laughs> to come with a shot like that. That was really an incredible match and an incredible shot and an incredible finish. I've seen a lot of things, but that was one of the most spectacular things I've seen in this game. Well, Earl's on his way up here now and also with Efren and... Uh, Yeah, I'm going to stretch this mic out here. Uh, we're, we're now on the outside of the booth. Uh, Earl and Efren are both here. <laughs> Efren, Earl, Earl, I'm going to tell you what, uh, I really commend you with your sportsmanship. I mean, when he made that kick shot, the life should have drained from your body, but yet you were glad for this man. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I've been playing pool for 25 years, and I've only seen that shot made on me twice. And one of those times was tonight. Keith McCready made that same shot on me in 1984 when we were playing call shots in the Clyde Childers Tournament in Richmond, Kentucky. And I was sitting there looking at it. I said, he can't go one rail. He's got to kick two rails. I said, Keith made this shot on me one time in 25 years. And I said, is it possible he could make the same shot that Keith made, uh, what was that, 11 years ago? And he did. I'm thrilled for him. That was a great shot. Well, I, I know you were thrilled for him, and you were really genuinely thrilled for him. We, we got you on the monitor. It's absolutely great sportsmanship, and I commend you for it. What a great tournament, Earl. You played a great Well, tournament. I'll tell you, you know, uh, I'm very fortunate. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very fortunate to be in the finals. I didn't play well this week. Some guys uh, fainted over a few shots for me, and uh, but uh, overall, I, I feel like I gave a good performance. Uh, I, I made a few mistakes here and there. I think that I might have won the match had I corrected some safeties or something like that. I played a poor safety on the last game. But, you know, for an end, the end like that, I'd rather it end like that than win in the tournament, actually. <laughs> it was a thrilling finish. Everyone, everyone that was here in attendance can testify to that. It was a thrilling finish. We couldn't have asked for anything better than that. You played great, believe me. Well, me and uh, Efren's played a lot of matches around the world, and I can speak for him, you know. If, uh, if I'm playing and, 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 and I'm not making too many simple mistakes, he knows he's got a tougher time with me. That's right. And, I'm uh, sure he does. He respects and you. And Efren knows I was struggling this week. He could see it in my <laughs> stroke. But now, balls aren't pocketing right, uh, struggling with position. He knows there's a different man from the world tournament to here, but but Efren is, uh, you know, he's a dedicated player. I think he practices a little more than I do. But, you know, I've played all of them. He's the greatest, as well, far as I'm Well, I'm concerned. sure he appreciates that, especially coming from you. Uh, Once again, we appreciate what you've said here, and congratulations on a great tournament. Thank great you, finish. Billy. Thank you very much. And now the magician, the man that was dead <laughs> in the water. We all thought you were dead in the water when you walked up to the table. Well, you were at the table. You played a safety on, a, on Earl, but you inadvertently pocketed the eight in the corner pocket, and we all thought you were dead. How were you thinking? Well, I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm just, I'm just already. You know, it's very hard to kick that. But I need luck for that kind of shot. <laughs> well, you know, on the monitor, we have the ability to show it once again, so everyone here can see it, including yourself. So what we're going to do is, what were you thinking right now? Tell us. I'm, I'm thinking of two real well, well, I can't say what can I do? But it's close. <laughs> it's close. He, he can't hardly go two rails. He had to spin the ball a lot. Wow, what's going to happen here? Very thinly pocketing, hitting the five, and will it reach the pocket? Who knows? <laughs> oh, my God, you made it again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great shot, you know, and a, yeah. and a, a, a tremendous finish yeah. to a wonderfully played tournament. By the way, you played magnificently the entire way through the tournament. You were the only undefeated player. Earl came back on you. He tried to win it, but it wasn't meant to be. But he stopped the beat. <laughs> 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 I'd like to say something, too, Billy. Uh, 
uh, I, you know, I'm thinking back to some of the greatest shots I've made in my career. And believe me, Martians don't shoot straighter than I do. <laughs> but uh, that probably will go down as one of the greatest shots that, that, that I think I've ever seen. Well, that's definitely a classic. Under that situation is what I'm saying. The Absolutely. circumstances, 10-10, uh, I mean 12-12. I can't think of a greater shot, and I've made millions of them. <laughs> he's right. Uh, he's right? <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, congratulations, Efren, on your, on your win here at the Sands. And uh, you're a great champion, and you played a great champion. And once again, I, we commend both of you people here for a great performance. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Jimmy, I'll tell you, it doesn't get any, oh. any, any better than that, really. I couldn't have picked a better one to sit in on. I know that. I'm glad I did. I know this is going back to the Philippines. They're going to be calling <laughs> Pat Fleming up saying, send us that tape. Yeah, that is 300 of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. 300, yeah. 3,000. There's a lot of Filipinos <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, it was great. It was great. It I was, enjoyed it, Billy. It Thank you pleasure. very much. It was a pleasure working with you, Jimmy. You're such a knowledgeable player, and uh, and I really enjoyed sitting next to you, listening to, to, your, to, to your ways of playing the game and how you think. And I'm certainly sure anyone that listens to this tape will get uh, a lot of appreciation out of, out of the way that you play the game and, and reflect it to the people here that are watching it. Anyways, on behalf of James Rippey, this is Bill Incardona saying thanks a lot for supporting AccuStats, and we really mean that from the bottom of our hearts, because if it wasn't for you people out there, there wouldn't be any AccuStats, and we wouldn't be able to, to carry the most, you know, the greatest players in the world to, to throughout the country and the, even in the world. So thanks a lot for supporting AccuStats. Give Pat a call at 1-800-828-0397.